Hey everybody, it's TJ with Avidyne here. In the following short video, we're going to discuss the IFD interface with a JPI EDM700, EDM730, EDM800, or EDM830. Uh, the wiring and configuration data is pretty much the same between all of these units. So, And as always, um, following information is for reference use only. It's not FAA approved data. Um, for FAA approved data, please go to the installation manual, uh, make sure you get the latest revision and you're looking at the latest and greatest data. The way that most RS-232 interfaces set up is there's a configuration on both ends of that RS-232 um, that have to match. So what I've got here is, is a chart that'll help you guys kind of figure out what settings match what. So we're talking about the transmit out of the EDM700 and an RS-232 in. I didn't bother labeling the pins because you can use any available RS-232 for this. Um, on the EDM series, there's what they call a GPS C setting, C as in Charlie. And depending on how that thing is configured determines what format the information coming out is. And that's going to determine how we want to set up the IFD input to read that information correctly. So over here on the right hand side, this column is the GPSC settings from the EDM side of things. You'll notice the first one is a zero. That's if you're not using GPS uh, to track any of this stuff. You're not spitting any of this data out. The next one is a GPSC setting of one, which is the shade and mini flow format. The IFD equivalent for that is going to be shade and fuel. GPSC setting number two, you'll notice, is an allied signal format. Uh, this one's format B. And if we go over here to the IFD side, you'll see that that's not supported. So, big thing to keep in mind here is the allied signal formats out of the EDM are not supported by the IFD. So if you're replacing an old KLN series with an IFD, I think that's generally when you're going to see that allied signal format being used. Um, so you're going to have to go in and change the configuration on both ends of this thing. Our next option over here on the EDM is 3. That's for RNAV EI fuel. And on the IFD side, it's labeled exactly the same, RNAV EI fuel. GPSC setting of 4 is another allied signal format, not supported by the IFD. GPSC setting of 5, at least as of this recording, is not used. So we're not going to do anything with that. GPSC setting of 6 is your Garmin 435-30 format to waypoint only. On the IFD side, we accept that as Shaden FADC. Uh, GPSC setting of 7 is the Garmin 435-30 to destination only. The IFD also accepts that as Shaden FADC. Uh, GPSC setting of 8 is another allied signal format. Um, also not supported by the IFD. So, big takeaway here is, you know, you can use any of these settings except for the allied signal formats, but the IFD does need to be set accordingly for that information to come across correctly. And then if we go look at the other end of this RS-232, uh, the transmit out of the IFD into the EDM 700, uh, or 730, or 800, or 830, those units are expecting a standard aviation output. They don't need to be configured as long as they're configured to accept GPS information. They're always going to be accepting aviation. Here's where we're going to go in and we're going to set up these RS-232 ports. we got channel 1 in and out. I chose channel 1 for no particular reason. You can use any of these RS-232 channels the same way. We're also assuming that uh, our EDM GPSC setting is for a 6 or a 7 in this example. So if that's the case, we would set up our input for Shaden FADC, and we would set up our output for Standard Aviation. Now, getting into troubleshooting <clears throat> these fuel flow interfaces, you know, in, in flight when the aircraft is moving and we've got good fuel flow data, we should see these range rings. So if you guys aren't taking these on a test flight, um, it might not be as obvious, you know, what, what your remaining fuel is going to get you. Because a lot of this fuel totalizer 
and current fuel flow information is going to be based off of you know your your current airspeed information and all of that good jazz it takes all of that into account uh, so I wouldn't use this as a uh, necessarily a a rule of thumb to go check for these range rings and stuff when you're just sitting on in the hangar and the engine not running and that kind of thing but there are a couple other ways we can take a look at this to make sure it's working correctly the first one is right here um, what you'll do is in normal flight mode go to the aux page group go to the utilities tab and then go to calculators and you'll notice the second box down here is our fuel planner calculator and there's a box right here for fuel flow. You should be able to, um, you know, bump your fuel boost pump and see some fuel flow data being generated right there. If you don't see any fuel flow in that box, there's a good chance that maybe something's configured wrong or you got something wired incorrectly, something to that effect. So if the IFD is receiving valid information from a fuel flow device, when you boot up the IFD, you're going to get that enter page where it's testing your indicator outputs. Once you hit enter, it should take you to the allow ignore option for your Wi-Fi and Bluetooth stuff. Once you go past that, it should take you to your fuel management page like you see here. Um, not all fuel flow systems are going to provide fuel totalizer data. So if they don't, you might have to enter a beginning fuel in this thing to get the system to kind of come to life. Um, if they do send fuel totalizer data, then you shouldn't have to do anything here. Just verify that that fuel total is correct and hit enter and off you go. Um, just be aware, <clears throat> not all systems send all of that data. So depending on what you've got connected to this thing will kind of determine whether or not you'll see fuel totalizer data there. You may have to manually enter your beginning fuel level. If you are expecting a fuel management page to come up, but it doesn't, it could be a, an indication that there's an RS-232 communication problem between the two units. But that is not always the case. I would not use that as a hard and fast rule because oftentimes if the IFD was not locked onto GPS the last time it was powered off. When you boot it back up, it can sometimes think it's booting back up in flight, at least until it locks onto GPS and realizes it's on the ground. If the IFD boots in a manner that makes it believe that it, it might be booting in flight, it's going to skip this fuel management page. Okay? So just be aware of that. Another place we can go to troubleshoot a fuel flow interface, since we're using RS-232, is to boot the IFD in a maintenance mode. And we go over here to the status tab, as you see here. And we're going to go over here and cycle this info button until it says info RS-232. This is our RS-232 port monitor. So this monitor is data coming in. There's a bytes column here, which shows you in real time how many bytes of data have been received on that port. So it's going to be whatever corresponding port lines up with however we have this EDM wired up to the IFD. If we read zero on this port, um, that usually would indicate that something's miswired or something's misconfigured. Okay, There should be some data coming across there so long as we've got the thing connected and everything's powered on. And you'll notice this other column over here is errors. Now, sometimes we see instances where we've got bytes of data coming in, but they're also registering a lot of errors. In that scenario, um, something to look for anyway is a configuration mismatch, where maybe it's using a different protocol than what we've got the IFD configured for. Another thing that can possibly cause this is if you've got you know, some type of a, a EMI source that's causing electrical interference on those data lines, uh, those sometimes can come across as errors as well. So what we'd like to see, ideally, is the bytes column climbing as more data comes in and the errors column staying at a zero. If we look at the other side of this interface uh, from the IFD back out to the EDM, that aviation data we spoke about, 
The easiest way to test that is to boot the IFD in a normal flight mode, wait for the IFD to acquire a good GPS signal, and then throw a direct two into the IFD. You should be able to verify on the JPI um, that, we're, that it's receiving waypoint information. If it's not, I would highly recommend double check your wiring and port configurations and all of that good stuff because something's not right. And the last little thing I wanted to touch on as far as this interface goes, um, just so everybody's aware of it, oftentimes we find ourselves doing an installation where there's multiple items in the aircraft that are all expecting standard aviation data. And it can sometimes be a pain when we have to parallel that RS-232 into multiple places in the aircraft. With the IFD, you don't have to do that. The IFD can be set up for standard aviation data on multiple ports, assuming you have you know, RS-232 ports available. Um, you can set up aviation on as many of them as you want, and they will all work. So, if you've got an instance where you've got, say, an EDM-700 for fuel flow that's expecting aviation data, as well as, you know, a 406 ELT that's expecting aviation data as well, you don't have to parallel that. You still can if you want to, but you don't have to. You can set those up on separate ports, assuming you've got enough RS-232s available to do that. Okay? All right. Thanks for watching. Until next time.